Hey, this is YBR, and have you ever had a simple project go completely out of control? Because I have. This project right here was a complete disaster, and I've never, ever, ever had this much difficulty upgrading a computer. So I'm going to break this down day by day. It all started Friday. This is the day that started the disaster. So I had two hard drives running in a RAID 0. So let's pretend these are hard drives for a minute. What that means is every time you would put a file on the drive, it would be split between the two drives. And if one drive fails, you lose the data in both of the drives. So why would you ever want that? Because it's faster. And when you're working with big video files, which I often am, that extra speed can be beneficial. So that day I'm working, making some videos and all that. And then all of a sudden I can't access my drives. What's up with that? Restart the computer. It's good to go. About maybe 15 minutes later, I can't access my drives again. Restart it. It's good to go. Again, 15 minutes later, can't access it. Restart. Good to go. And I know it's okay. This is a pattern. Something's not right. I put some extra fans on the hard drives thinking maybe they're overheating or something. Same deal. At this point I realized, okay, one of the hard drives is failing. I got to pull as much data off as I possibly can before it completely fails. And these are both 10 terabyte drives. That means there's 20 terabytes of data on these things I need to pull off. Now, luckily, I don't need to pull off all the data. because It's only about 16 terabytes full. And a lot of that was from videos that I already uploaded to YouTube. And if the video is already uploaded, I don't need the raw footage anymore. But there were some videos on there that I recorded and edited or they're halfway through editing that were not on YouTube yet. That was what I needed to save. So I did my best to pull as much as I could off of these drives. But every time I would restart, the time would be a little bit less before it goes offline, a little bit less. And at the end, it was lasting just a few minutes before it would go offline, which was barely enough time to pull a big video file off of the drive. But luckily, I got everything that I could think of possibly needing, I think. I'm sure I'll eventually realize I missed some things, but I got a good majority of the important stuff. But I realized this can't be happening again, and I'm going to deal with it tomorrow. My initial plan on Saturday was pretty simple. I was going to double the number of hard drives I have, so I would then have four hard drives, and I would basically have two copies of every file. That way, if one hard drive fails, well, no worries. There's another file on a different drive, and no data will be lost. Except, things never go according to plan for me. So in my old case, as in not this case, but the one I had before this one, the hard drives mounted in a kind of unique way. You have this bracket, you slide in the hard drive, and then you put a screw into these vibration dampeners. Except it's not that simple for me because these vibration dampeners, they can just kind of pop out like that. And for some reason, I decided to pop out most of them, I guess, because I couldn't find more than like three or four of them. And then also, you need very specific screws to mount into these. And I had no screws. So I had no way to install the hard drives. Yes, I could try to just kind of make my own mechanism to put the hard drive into the case. And I really considered that, except I want my data to be safe and secure. For my data to be safe and secure, my hard drive needs to be safe and secure. So I don't want to be trying to mangle up a mounting system that's going to make the hard drive fail prematurely. I want to make sure the hard drive lasts as long as I possibly can. So I want to use the mounting mechanisms that come with the computer. So I look online thinking, maybe I could just buy some of these things online and some of the screws. I don't know if my search terms are wrong, but I couldn't find any for sale. Next thought is, yeah, I could go and email the manufacturer saying, hey, can I buy some of these? Except I figured that would take a while. And I was paranoid. I wanted my data safe now. So I said, what's my next best option? The best thing I come up with, we're going to buy a new case. We're just going to go ahead and buy a new case. There were a handful of other minor problems with the case that I had that were mostly caused by me as well. For example, the USB ports didn't work because I slammed my chair into them a few times and it kind of busted them up. I lost a ton of other screws for it. Like the side panel was held on by two screws and it was supposed to have four. I lost a bunch of the uh, back panel things that go on the graphic card. Just all kinds of missing pieces. So I decided, yeah, we're going to get a new case. And I did all my research and I decided, you know what? I really like this case. We're just going to get another one of those. And that's what I did. This piece I have right here is actually from the other case I got. But then I was thinking, you know what? If I'm going to be switching cases, I got to pull everything out of here and put it into a new case. If I'm going to have to do all that effort. Are there any parts I want to upgrade as well? And the answer to that was, yes, there is. So my old processor was an Intel 6950X. That was a really good processor. It's 10 cores, 3 gigahertz. Except nowadays you can get 32 cores at 3 gigahertz in Threadripper. 
That's a pretty hefty upgrade. No, you can't directly compare gigahertz to gigahertz, but in this situation, that is a good upgrade for me. And you might be wondering, why BRD really need that much power? That's a lot of power, man. Yes, there's a very specific situation. This seems to happen probably like 70% of the time I upload a video. So I record the video, I edit it, and then I encode the video, which takes like two or three hours, and then I upload it to YouTube, which takes like an hour or two, depending on how well my internet's being. So it takes me like five hours to upload a video. And what I'll do is I'll upload it during the day, and then like right before I go to bed, I'll take a look at the video, and like, does this video look good? 70% of the time it doesn't, and there's some error that I gotta fix. So to fix the error, what I do, I go into my video editor, fix the error, and then I gotta encode the video again. It's another two or three hours. Upload the video again, that's another hour or two. So then I got like five hours of time where I'm just zombied on the internet trying to mindlessly stay awake because I'm too tired to really accomplish anything meaningful. I'm just waiting for all that to take place so I can go to bed. It's a complete waste of time for me and I need to make that time reduced. So if I get a faster processor, it might cut an hour or two down on the encoding time, which means I get to go to bed an hour or two earlier and I get an hour or two more in my day. To me, that is really, really worth it. And I want the fastest processor I can so that way I can get to bed earlier and get more consistent with my scheduling because there are days where I'm staying up and the sun's rising. And I'm just like, come on, upload this video so I can go to sleep. So that's why I wanted to get an upgrade on my processor. And then when you upgrade the processor, at least in my situation here, got to upgrade the motherboard as well. For the motherboard, I just said, you know what? Well, it looks good. All right, that looks fine. I didn't really think too deeply into it because there wasn't that many options and they're all pretty similar. Like I had a few requirements. These ones met the requirements. I just picked one at random pretty much. The only real complaint about the one I have is it doesn't have a really fast ethernet plug, but I have my own card already that does that. So I didn't really care. But then I was also thinking, you know what? Me being me, I'm probably going to overclock the Threadripper processor because my old processor was overclocked. Threadripper uses a lot of power overclocked, especially when you have the 209090. That thing can use so much power that I felt like, you know what? I think I should have a custom liquid cooling system for this. And I've never built a custom liquid cooling system before, so I figured this would be a good time to do it. It sounds kind of funny. It's like I built so many computers, but never custom liquid cooling. Why not? Because when I'm building computers for other people, I don't want my work to be the responsibility exactly there. Like if something leaks and it's because it was like my first time making a liquid cooling system, I would feel terrible. So I made sure I would always just use off the shelf cooling for them. And then for myself, I just also never felt the need exactly. But with this coming out, I said, yeah, we're going to get a real upgraded liquid cooling system. And then also I was thinking in the future, I might want to liquid cool my graphics card as well except I'm not going to do that yet because I'm going to upgrade the graphic card itself in a little bit. So I figured don't invest money in the old card, invest money in the new card. So anyways, I got all the stuff you need for a liquid cooling system. And I even had a nice color scheme going for all the parts I was buying. Like I got orange on the case. My other case wasn't orange. This is actually a part from the, the case I bought, but I like orange casing, orange cabling, orange uh, coolant. Like it was a real nice theme going on with everything. I thought it was going to look real nice, except that plan also blew up in my face. So on Monday, all the parts come and I'm installing them. Everything's going pretty well until we get to the radiator. So the radiators have screws that came with them and I decided to try to go ahead and use those. Now the screws that come with it though, they use an Allen wrench. So that's the kind where you have it like this and you gotta rotate it. And I don't like these too much because it seems like a lot of the time I end up stripping the screws when I use these. And what do you know what? The very first screw I put in, I strip it. So I'm like, okay, this is dumb. I spent a good long time removing the stripped screw. Then I find a screw which I think is the same size, but it has a Phillips cross head on it. So it's just a little bit easier to work with. And then I go ahead and install the radio using that, except the screws I grabbed were not the same length. And that is really important here because here's a radiator. Okay. So normally you install the screw and it just sits. Whoops. Okay. Let's pretend this is the screw then. So you install the screw and it sits right above all the important bits. Yeah, well, the screw I had was a little bit longer. So instead of sitting right above everything, it went right into it. It actually punctured the radiator in every single spot that I installed the screw into pretty much, I think. And I ruined two radiators by doing that. So then I turned it on, started filling it up. It was just leaking everywhere. And at first I thought I got bad radiators and I did a quick search like, oh yeah, I, I screwed that up. That is completely on me. 
So I pulled out a screw and it's like, this is not the same length, even though I thought it was. So I had to go ahead and order some new radiators, which wouldn't come for yet another few days. So there goes another delay. So on Wednesday, the radiator gets here and I should mention, I'm pretty much always spending extra money to overnight the parts here, trying to get this computer back up and running as soon as possible. So I get the parts, I install them, everything works pretty good except for one small leak on one of the fittings. It was leaking a bit because it was missing the gasket, which is like this blue piece right here, just kind of seals between the screws to get a real secure liquid tight seal on it. Easy fix, so I just replace, I have to drain the system, replace it, and we're good to go. And then I let it uh, run for a bit, make sure it doesn't leak. I think I did like eight hours. After eight hours, it's like, all right, there's no leaks. I'm gonna go ahead and run the hardware in there. I turn it all on. It's like, all right, computer's working. We're good to go. It was late at night. So I'm like, I'm gonna put this thing into the, where it usually sits and go to bed. Tomorrow I get to do some work, except I was wrong. So on Thursday, I was doing the final setup stuff. I was installing the games and the software I need, like the video editor and the video recorder and all that kind of stuff. And then I noticed something's not quite right. Half of my RAM is not showing up. And this is still in the case prior to the case you see right here. So that was case number two we're talking about. And in the case number two, this reservoir was installed kind of like this. And I had no good way to really access the RAM behind the reservoir. So what I had to do is I had to completely drain the system out of all the liquid again. And then I had to undo a lot of the fittings and stuff to be able to move the reservoir out of the way. And then I had to reset it up so I could have the reservoir sitting on the table while to keep the processor cool while I was switching out the RAM trying to figure out what was going on exactly. And it turns out, as I expected, the motherboard was dead. And I figured the motherboard would be dead because the RAM I had was working before I put it in this case. So I had to go ahead and buy a new motherboard, which wasn't going to arrive until Saturday. And then on Thursday, I'm just kind of frustrated at this point because of how much effort was required to go ahead and swap out the parts on the other case. So I went to my local computer store just to see what they got because trying to overnight a case costs a ton because cases are heavy. And they had this case. It was a Thermaltake View 91, I think is the name. And it seems to work fine. There are a few complaints I have about it where I think I might replace it soon in the future. But it works good enough because it's big and spacious. So like now everything fits easily. Although I am frustrated, like the radiator setup is less than ideal in this case. Like the radiators I have, they fit perfectly in the other case. But now it's like there's this big gap right here. And it's like, I kind of feel like I need a bigger radiator that fills this gap. Um, but anyways, this is set up with really lenient tubing. After that last experience, I said, you know what? I'm gonna make the tubes extra long. So that way, if I need to remove a part, I can unscrew it and then wiggle it around and move it out of the way, which might be a bad idea because then the fittings might loosen up as you're jiggling it around. I don't know if I should actually do that now that I think about it. Um, but it just makes it a lot easier to swap anything out. And what I did on Thursday before everything arrived is I ended up installing everything the way I would want it basically and figuring out how long to have all the tubes, everything's ready to go. And then all I would have to do when the new motherboard comes is swap the motherboard and we should have a functional computer. So it's now Saturday and the answer is yes, this computer now finally works. Unfortunately, I'm just really unhappy with the way it turned out to be honest with you though. Like there are a few issues with this case that kind of drive me crazy. So if you have hard drives installed on in the back of this thing, you can't use some of these cable pass throughs. Like there's just a hard drive on the other side of this. You can't put a cable through that and that's happening on a lot of them. So the cables are a little bit messier than I'd want. The color scheme's kind of just all over the place because I originally had all the same color for cables, but I had to swap out some of the cables to be different length. And then the orange doesn't match the case. And I'm just kind of like, you know what? This is a disappointment, but I need the computer working. Like this, this has been so ridiculously long to get it fixed. I don't care what it looks like at all right now. The cable management on the rear is non-existent. It's just plugged in. There's no zip ties or nothing like I would normally do. I'm just like, you know what? It's working, I'm done. Now I just gotta put it under my desk, hope nothing breaks in the process because you know I've broken something else the whole way through it seems like. And um, oh, I should mention when I was replacing the case too, I broke the other case. Like I say, I broke the case and I'm like, I don't know exactly how, but I managed to break it. So yeah, now I'm just gotta put this thing into where it normally goes, get Windows installed again, or maybe just use the one that's already there, I guess, since it's the same hardware, it wouldn't matter too much. And uh, We'll be back to making videos.
What a disaster of upgrading computers, huh? Anyways, that will do it for this video. If you guys would be interested in seeing more computer stuff where I actually build it, because the original plan, by the way, was to do a video where I did the building, and then there was just so many problems, I abandoned that just to try to get it done faster. But uh, in the future, I can do some videos where we're just upgrading the computer and kind of chilling and, and having some uh, good old times and stuff, you know? So if you'd be interested in that, do tell me. And uh, yeah, I think I, there's a lot of things I want to change with this, but at least it's working. So until next time, this has been YBR. I'll see you.